the doctrine of hell. All these doctrines came up from the Gentiles involvement in our churches that that was causing major division among the churches and some of Constantine's soldiers within his so-called alleged Holy Roman Empire. That's what caused these different councils. It was like two or three of these damn councils because these Gentiles were seducing Israelites to start believing it into this nonsense. These day, these same doctrines that was around since the time of Nimrod and the ancient Babylonians and the Sumerians, man, started to creep up. That's why I told you when you read the Apocrypha, it said after Jesus died, my after my son Jesus died, and all the men that was with him, the whole world should be in darkness for seven days. Meaning that all these different lies and doctrines of Christ would, would start to surface once Christ and his disciples, okay, the last disciple that passed away was who? If I'm not mistaken, it was John the Revelator. It's favor. Once John the Revelator died, that's when all sorts of doctrines came out concerning Christ. Saying that he had sex with Mary Magdalene, they had children. Yeah, all these doctrines begin to surface, man. These are, and guess what? Your virgin curse doctrine, that's one of them. Yes, and also we'll be also cutting the idea that God and Christ is the same. That also came up. Give me Luke chapter 1, verse 31. That also came up. That also came up right along with all these other doctrines and, 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 and lies concerning our Lord and our Savior. Okay? Give me Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Right. And we only understand that that conception or conceiving of that womb was from the Holy Spirit or of the Holy Spirit. Meaning the Holy Spirit was the one that made it possible for this child that we read in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, and this child that was read of in 2 Samuel 7, 11, verse 12, to be possible. Not child itself, but this particular child had to come from the Holy Spirit because this particular child was the Messiah. That was the whole purpose of the Holy Spirit involvement in this child, the Messiah, not the virgin birth. Read. And bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yahweh. Just like it was spoken about and prophesied in Isaiah 9, it says, Now stop. Now when we read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Why did Isaiah bring up anything about a virgin birth? It says, For unto us a child was born, for unto us a son was given. Where was the woman in the virgin birth? Read. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the We just read there in Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. We just read there in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 11 through 12. When I will be a father, and he will be my son. That's why it was declared that Christ will be called the son of the highest, the son of God, like we read in um um um, um, um Matthew 3:17. Read. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Right, because it was already prophesied that Christ would rule over the throne of David. We read 2 Samuel 7 and 12. We read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It was already prophesied that this particular child from David's seed line loin would be establishing the throne of his father David. Not his mother, his father David forever. Which was that cuts the virgin birth right there. That showed you Christ had a father. It said David was his father. We just read it. It's not the son of David. But David was not born or around at that time. So how can Christ be the son of David without having David as his father or having a father at all? What do you want to lie and say, Mary? First of all, show me this. Now, not to even entertain this nonsense, but let's just be devil's advocate for a minute. Show me a scripture where it says Mary was from the house of David. When you read the scripture, said Elizabeth was Mary's cousin. Elizabeth was a Levite. Zacharias was a Levite. John the Baptist was a Levite. Where is your evidence to show that Mary was from the house of David? And even if you were to bring out some doctrine of it, which is not true, you still have to explain why the Lord said that this seed line will be of the males, be the male heir. When he said his throne of his kingdom his seed out of his loins, which all leads up to men or males, bringing forth this child of the seed line of David. Then say nothing about no interruption of a woman without the use of a man. And sign does not represent miracle. The sign in Isaiah the seventh chapter had nothing to do with Christ. The sign in Isaiah the seventh chapter was dealing with Ahaz's son. And the Syrian conflict that was going on there at that time. That was the Emmanuel. That was a showing of how God was with him. 
because he wanted a sign instead of just going by the word of mouth of the Lord he didn't he, he wanted the Lord to show him a sign he didn't want to believe in the Lord when his mouth alone so the Lord said I'm gonna show you a sign and like I said that's another topic that I'm gonna have to do on my own but we read Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 God was with us unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and said nothing about no damn virgin curse doctrine read he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest yeah, the Lord God he shall be given unto him the throne of his father David read and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever right we just read that in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 the increase of his government there shall be no end why is he going to reign over the house of Jacob forever because it was already prophesied that what that all the all the rulers of David will come all the rulers of Israel will come from David and why did the Lord choose King David and his seed line? Because he said David was a man after my own heart. And also, too, it was already prophesied that the kings of Israel will be established through Judah. When it said that the scepter should not depart from Judah, going back since the time of Jacob and Moses. From when Jacob wrote it in Genesis 49, and Moses wrote it from what Jacob said to his sons in Genesis 49 chapter. Unto Shiloh come, which represents Christ, the peaceable one. Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So it's already established that somebody from the line of Judah will be established as the kings of Israel. And that specific line of Judah that was chosen to be the kings of Israel was who? David. And the ultimate fulfillment of the of the king of Israel through the loin of David, despite the fact that a lot of David's sons was off, the one who took on the burden of all the sons of David was who? The Messiah, Christ. That was the way that the Lord was able to keep his promise to David. And to bring forth his own son, all right, to give the understanding of the word of God. Because the Gentiles and wicked Israelites corrupted the word at that time. And the truth had to be brought forth through his son's own mouth. And reestablished on the earth just like it was during the time of Moses. When we were first given the law by Christ when we came out of Egypt. Read on and of his kingdom there shall be no end right and this kingdom shall be no end meaning christ's rulership will have no end we just read it in isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 read then said mary unto the angel how shall this be seen i know none of man so this is where you men stumble at so you don't understand this first of all this is a woman the woman was just told all these things concerning the messiah and Mary said, well, how am I going to bring forth this child, the son of the highest, whatever, when I, I don't know a man? Read. Verse 35, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon you. It said the Holy Spirit will come upon Mary. This is not saying that the Holy Spirit will impregnate Mary. You got to understand that the scripture said, Man's goings of the Lord. How can a man understand his own way? Meaning the Lord was going to utilize the Holy Spirit to make this happen. Read. Right? The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. This does not represent that, oh, the Lord is just going to impregnate you. No, it said the power of the Most High will overshadow you, meaning that you will be in the care of the Most High. This is how you're going to bring forth the Messiah. This is not how you're going to bring forth a child. This is how you're going to bring forth the Son of the Living Power, child. Because of all the Holy Spirit and the power and the overshadowing of the most high is going to be over you this is how you're going to bring forth the messiah read therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee it still says nothing about a virgin birth it says that holy thing that will be born of thee remember the angel was focusing on the messiahship of this not well how i'm going to have a child so you men are carnal you look at this as if mary's asking well how can i have a child mary did not say how can i have a child if i don't know a man the, the thing that the, 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 the focus was not to tell Mary you're going to have a child. It was the focus was on Mary. You're going to bring forth the Messiah. The Messiah was a focus on this issue, not her having a baby. So you men are just so damn carnal and non-spiritual. You understand what was going on here. The Messiah was the focus. Christ was the focus, not a child was a focus. The purpose of how was she going to be bringing forth the Son of God? was a questioning in the spirit of it. How was she going to be doing this if she knew not a man? Read. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Right. So that's why the scripture said that first of all, in order for this to happen with you bringing forth the Son of God, 
the spirit of the living power has to has